achievement of peace cannot be accomplished or reached without the love of God. Hell, I love God so much. The great peace of the world is just behind our doorsteps. This is the peace for which many people are enjoying, but some countries are hoping for it. It will certainly come at a time when they agree to accept and agree to peace. The world must come together and unite as one. We must forget arms and ammunition and we promote peace and stability in the world. Millions of peoples are suffering from the effects of wars. We need cooperation, that's what we said. And unity in our loving homes, families and our loving countries. There are now signs that peace is now possible. Cooperation has grown between nations, but false belief and national self-interest like civil wars blocks progress of peace. Burning nuclear weapons or settling specific conflicts is not enough. Steps should be taken to remove the basic causes of war and achieve lasting peace must be advertised worldwide. The world must abandon self-interest of taking power by means of arms and ammunition. We have seen how the greed for power, the part of a few can bring disaster to a society. Renewing lives of innocent people blunder the productive resources which we are accumulated for many years and leave the society in state. The spiritual leaders are crying for peace. The Baha'is are crying for peace. Hindus are crying for peace. The Buddhas are crying for peace. The Muslims are crying for peace. The Christians are crying for peace and even the free thinkers are crying for peace. We must accept the oneness of mankind and allow, and, and allow peace to live with us. God solely hears and grants your prayers. He also accepts your repentance, but the acceptance of your prayers depends on the fulfillment of a condition. The condition is that the wealth and property you are blessed with is a divine trust. There are people in your society and in your country who are the victims of social injustice and who are insufferable scapegoats of economic occasion. If you do not care for their emotional and mental pain, if you do not leave them out of their disrupt condition, if you do not make any effort to resociate their creative economic effort by extending them a helping hand if you do not furnish a practical proof of your concern and heart burning for them. How can you expect God to please with you? If you ignore his creatures, treat his people like the garbage and trust of the earth, when in fact he called at them as he called at God's knives. When you treat your dogs, dogs better than these fields of human flesh, when human beings of blood and bones sleep on a dirty footstep, sweating in the cruel heat of the sun and seafar in the open on dark, frozen nights while dogs and cars and pigeons sleep in a cozy electric blanket, inhales the cold breath of air conditioners in the summer heat and enjoying the warmth of radiators. How can you expect a living God to respond to human indifferences and cold-blooded ruthlessness? These people in distress are in fact the darlings of God. And anyone, if anyone who helps them, who loves them, in fact love God. God treasures his bubbling millions and his uncrumbling trillions and their mysteries is a test of a generosity of others. But they are not bakers. Trust me, they are not bakers. They do not solicit charity, 
nor do they importune the men of means. It is rather the moral and religious duty of the influent and the prosperous to dig them out of, to feed them and to provide them with a sound economic basis so that they become financially independent later on. Therefore, any money or charity spent on them is a money, money charity spent on God. God himself receives his soft forms, charity, and then distributes it with his own hands among the handicapped people. God knows they are self-respecting people and will not accept charity if it is labeled as charity. So God confers on them your charity as if it is a divine blessing. The divine marks of present pretense is essential because it does not endure their self-respect. But you do this, what this please God. Either you turn yourself away from their haunting mysteries, or if you ever help them out of pity and compassion, you do so with such inflated soul of false pride and arrogance that they are under a debt of gratitude to you for the rest of their lives. At that time, you do not realize that in fact, you are obliging God himself and not his warm creatures because the hands that receive your charities is the hand of God himself. Thank you for listening.